verses 14 through 16. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16. It says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a mountain, blown in the night all the sea. Don't hide your light under a basket. Instead, put it on the stand and let it shine for all. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all the sea, so everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. 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 They didn't have electricity, right? Didn't have electricity. Didn't have a whole lot of lights. Like, you ever see a, a picture from space of the United States? It's like all lit up. It wasn't like that, right? All they had were candles and torches. So I guess, like, if you're wandering through the wilderness, it was like a lighthouse off in the distance to see a city on a hill lit up, <coughs> drawing people to it. You are like, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. You know the song, right? We know this song. Anybody go to Sunday school when they were little? This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Did anybody meet uh, Major Dunham the other day? On the motorcycle? Yeah. yeah. Wasn't he walking around singing that song? Yeah. I, he got it in my head. And trust me, man, when I don't believe in coincidences, especially in this setting. When I heard him sing that song, I was looking at this building, thinking about a city on a hill. Thinking about how this Salvation Army in this city should be a beat of light. And where does it start? If I'm the administrator, it starts with me, right? I have to make sure that my life is right with God so that I am living as God would have me to live so that I might be the light to share. So that you too might see that light and be drawn to it. Just as people were back then when they saw that city on a hill. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hmm. So, I've made a decision, and I believe God has inspired me to make this decision. I have declared that we as the Salvation Army in Erie, Pennsylvania, the Adult Rehabilitation Center, will not stand by and wait for people to come to ask us for help. Because apparently, people might not even know that we're here. So, we are that light that shines. We are this building here. I pray that people see us and know what we do, and they, and they come here for help. But I think i got to go another step forward. I think I need to take that light out, side, so that others might see it. Right? I will not stand by. I, it drives me crazy here about all these heroin deaths, Jerry. How many heroin deaths just in people that we know were in our program and left early in the last two years? At least three, four, that were in our program and left and died of heroin overdoses. Let alone all the other heroin overdoses that are going on around here and everywhere else in this country. I'm not gonna stand by when I see a dude nodding out on the, on the curb anymore and walk on by without stopping and saying, dude, there's a better way. You need to get up off the sidewalk. If you want help, I'm here for you. Here's my card. Can I help you to detox? I think we need to be more proactive and I am here before God, asking for forgiveness for sitting in this building and thinking people were going to come to me for help. Because it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Is this building a city on a hill? Is it a light? Does it shine out there? That's what it's here for. But I don't think people know it. And I don't think people have seen it. So I'm going to make sure they do. I've decided I'll not sit there and turn the channel every time I see another gun death because I don't want to hear that news. 
If I see people in the inner city and, 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 and I, I'm not going to roll up my window. As a matter of fact, I might even stop. Well, that's kind of scary because if you stop, they're going to ask you what you want. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, right? The truth is this. I'm not going to just sit idly by and watch this stuff happen. I want to be that soul on fire for the Lord that goes out into the public and shares, shares a better way, God's way, with our communities. Kids killing each other over bikes and shoes. Didn't we just have one over a bicycle? 14-year-old killing an 18-year-old over a bicycle? Man, our communities are messed up. We need to get out there. We must fight. You must fight. And, and there's the truth. I know we have the answer. I, I know. I know with all my heart that we have the answer, which is in Christ Jesus. We have the answer. We just need to share it. This little light of mine, Jesus is the light, right? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine so that others might see it. We can't keep it stuck in this building. We have to let it shine. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a blanket or a basket. You better not put it under a blanket. You know, I always read that too. How do you put a light if it's a flame under a basket that was wicker? Then he'd really have a light. But I understand the premise. You don't hide the light. You don't put it, what's the waste? It's a waste. You lit the light so that you can light the room. You don't put something over it to cover it so nobody can see it. When you're on fire for the Lord, when you're on fire for the Lord, your light should shine out for all to see, not just keep it in this building. Man. The light is there for you. The light is there for you. The answer is in Christ Jesus. If you're living in darkness, if you're living in confusion, doubt, and pain, the light is available for you, which is Christ Jesus. It comes into our lives, and our lives change, and we see a better way. Are we going to put a bushel? Are we going to put a? Are we going to cover it up so nobody can see it? In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Man, how, how hard is it really for me, after doing this for so long, to go up to somebody on the street and say, Man, you need help? You need any help? You need any help? How hard is that? I'm making that commitment for myself. You guys, and I've always said this too, the new guy that walks in the door, the guy that got here yesterday, he's got something to share. He's got something to share. You've already had a night upstairs in a dorm. That dude hasn't yet. And he's wondering, what on earth is this going to be like? You at least have that to share. That's at least a little bit of light that you might share with your fellow man. Don't worry. It's all right. They're not out to get you here. Hopefully you know that, right? But when the guy, the new guy walks in the door, remember when you walked in the door, you were asking all those questions. In that way, you could be a light to even the new guy while you're here. Well, for me, I will fight. As long as there's people out there that need this place, and as long as there's people that need the Lord, I will fight. Here's some wonderful words. From our founder, William Booth. They might know how the Salvation Army started in the first place. Because this man went out on the street. He didn't stay in a building. He went out. He went out. He let his light shine. While women weep as they do now, I'll fight. While children go hungry as they do now, I'll fight. While men go into prison in and out. And in and out as they do now. I'll fight, and I'll add, as us, as we go in and out and in and out of programs, over and over, relapse, over and over and over again, I'll fight. I'll fight. 
to let people know that there's a better way. We don't need to go in and out, in and out. There's a better way, and that is in Christ Jesus. I'll fight while there is a poor lost girl upon the streets, while there remains one dark soul without the light of God, and that is the key. While there is one lost soul without the light of God, I'll fight. I'll fight to the very end. I'll fight to the very end. And I don't have a problem with the fight. I mean, that's who I am. I was that way before I came in to, to recovery. I was that way before I accepted Christ as my Savior. I'm out there. If you haven't noticed, I talk and I don't have a problem. I need to focus that. And that's where I am. I focus that and use that to serve the Lord. I'll fight. I'll fight for each and every one of us. I'll fight. As long as there are people out there that need this place, as long as there are people that need the Lord, I will fight. We have all the power we need at our disposal to win a battle. He is God. And we have this power through Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If the good news we preach is veiled from anyone, if it's under a bushel, if it's stuck in this building, if it's veiled from anyone, it is a sign that they are perishing. Unless we get the word out, we will have another die of a heroin overdose. Unless we get the word out, we'll have another child shot over a bicycle or shoes or something stupid. Satan, the god of this evil world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe, so they are unable to see the glorious light of the good news that is shining upon them. They don't understand the message we preach about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. And unless we go out without covering that light that's within us, unless we go out, more people will die. So I'll fight. I'm going to fight. That's my choice. Darkness blinds us from the light, but we can overcome the darkness through Christ Jesus. <coughs> John 8, 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you, will, you won't walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you have the light that leads to life. Jesus said that if I am in him and he is in me and I am in a relationship with him, I have surrendered myself to him. I've accepted him into my heart as my personal savior. I have that light that breaks through the darkness of our lives. It leads to life, to life, and to life more abundantly. Shine it over the whole wide world, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine it over the whole wide world, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, <coughs> let it shine. So I have to be that shining Wherever light. I am. It don't matter where I am. If I'm with a bunch of bikers, I have to still be shining that light. If I'm with a bunch of business owners, in some kind of a, a meeting, a committee meeting, I have to still be shining that light. If I go home to visit my family and my friends, and my friends are still out there, and I run into them, I have to be that shining light. If I'm on a corner and I see my buddies, yes, I gotta be that shining light. If I see that girl, and I start thinking about, nope, I got to be a shining light.
everywhere. All the time. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All the time. Everywhere. These are very wise words in this little kid's nursery school Bible class that we learned when we were little kids, some of us. Never go back to the darkness, let it shine. Jesus came to light our path so that we can find the way to which the Lord would have us to go, and He doesn't want us to go into the darkness. What's great about it all is if we continue to walk in His light, no one can extinguish it. No one can extinguish it. The light came so that we could be saved and find direction for our lives, and that must be shared. We must keep it burning and let it shine for all to see. For all to see. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And I thank God for giving me the light that overcomes the darkness of this world so that I might share it with you and with others. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that each one of us wants to come into the light. We've lived in darkness for so long, some of us might still want to stay there because we don't want people to see our sin. We think it's okay to continue to do the things that we do. But it's darkness. We fumble through the darkness. And we continue to be lost. I pray, Lord, now. I pray, Father, that as you speak to our hearts, help us to recognize that our need is for you. Help us to be honest with ourselves. Help us, Lord, to see that the things that we do that we know are wrong before your eyes need to be removed. Because we can never find true life while we're still living in darkness. Help us, Father, to push the enemy aside. Shine that light so that we might see. Thank you, Father, because you gave us the true light, which is your Son, Christ Jesus. And I pray, Lord, this morning that we're able to accept him into our hearts as our personal Savior so that we too might be that light. We have that light within us, Father, that we can shine out and share with the world. But Father, most of all, Lord, I pray, Father, that we do so, so that we might be forgiven of our sins, so that we might be able to put behind us our past. We might die of our old self and become new and become fresh. And Father, you set us on a, on a solid rock and steady us as we go. So I pray, Lord, that we're able to humble ourselves before you, admitting that we're sinners. We ask for forgiveness and we accept Christ into our hearts as our personal Savior repenting of our past, Lord, never wanting to go back into that darkness, Lord. I pray that you shed the light that we need to see so that we might be able to follow your will for our lives. We need to be able to see so that we might follow your will for our lives. And then I pray, Father, that we do not keep it to ourselves because it won't last. That flame under a bushel is going to go out. First of all, it's worthless, let alone it'll go out. So help us, Lord, to open our mouths. Help us, help us, Lord, for others just to even see our actions, the changes in our behavior, so that they might see you and find out, Lord, and draw close and seek you as we have sought you. Again, Father, I thank you for meeting our needs in this way. I thank you, Lord, for your, your presence here this morning. I thank you, Lord, for your word and your message. And I pray, Lord, that each one of us understands it. And we own it. We apply it to our lives. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. All right, guys.